Preparing for the coding interview sucks. You spend all this time trying to memorize 75 questions that the interviewer may or may not ask you. You go on LeetCode, try to find these questions. You're looking on Google, uh, Stack Overflow, YouTube to try to find the optimal solution. And you don't even know if the solution you find is the optimal solution for the problem you're trying to figure out. And you're doing all this day in, day out, preparing for that one interview. And once that interview date hits, the software engineer on Zoom, who probably doesn't want to be there, gives you a question asking something about when the best time to buy and sell a stock is you're panicking then you start writing semicolons in python and then you don't get the job and then you're sad and you have to do this all over again for the next interview in two months when a company actually gives you a chance does that sound stressful or even familiar to some of you well i believe i found the resource for you that you need to prepare for these coding interviews in a much more effective way and best of all it's free Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Joven of The Coloco Show. So, coding interviews. If you don't know what the coding interview is, basically when you apply for a job, at some point you're gonna have to do a coding interview in which you go in front of one or many other software engineers, they ask you a question, and you're asked to code up the optimal solution using your knowledge of data structures and algorithms and all of that such. And people study for this interview for days, weeks, months uh, leading up to it because they don't know when the next time they might get an interview is. Doesn't matter if you're a new college grad, if you just finished your boot camp course, or if you're an experienced software engineer with tons of experience with lots of projects. If you're looking for a new job, then at some point you're probably going to have to do the coding interview. And preparing for the coding interview is basically a skill onto itself. It doesn't matter how many projects you do, it doesn't matter how much you know theoretically. If you can't apply it during the coding interview, and answer a question that you'll never have to figure out the answer to when you're actually on the job, then chances are you're probably not going to go move on to the next round or get a job offer. And this is controversial for a lot of people because I just stated a lot of these questions are not even related to the actual job description or job role that you're going to be doing. Most companies adopted the modern coding interview process from Fang or Mama companies now, Facebook, Google, Amazon, Netflix. Uh, Microsoft. These companies made this process to filter out the best candidates in their opinion for what they needed. Basically how the coding interview works is that you sit down with a software engineer either in person or nowadays mostly virtual and then you're asked a question or a series of questions and you are supposed to find the most optimal solution for that problem and depending on the criteria for the company you also might have to discuss your solution in detail so that the company knows if you can communicate your solution and if you actually know what you're doing. In my opinion, I believe that the modern coding interview process does have its flaws. Now, do I have a better system in how companies can learn how to hire candidates? No, I'm not that smart. So I acknowledge at this time that it is a skill to actually prepare and actually do well in coding interviews. Nowadays, most people go try to grind the blind 75, 75 lead code questions that they believe a lot of companies ask during these interviews. And a lot of companies, I believe, do ask a lot of these questions. They try to memorize all the optimal solutions for all 75 questions without trying to figure out how they work. And once they get to the interview, and if the interview has a slight variation of that problem or only takes an aspect of one of those 75 questions, a lot of people get stumped at this part and can't move on. Many companies also value if candidates can explain their solution regardless of its optimal or brute force. And if you don't know how to explain it because you just memorized the answer, then that's a big red flag for a lot of companies and you might not get hired. This is why preparing for the coding interview is difficult because a lot of people I believe go about the wrong way or at least not the most optimal way. Luckily, that's where Nico.io comes in. If you're liking the videos so far, make sure to boop that like button right now. Neatcode is a YouTuber who offers solutions on his channel to lead code problems. At this point, he solved hundreds of lead code questions and provided his solutions and how to figure out the solution on his YouTube channel. Earlier this year, Neatcode launched his website, Neatcode.io, in which he provided not only the blind 75 questions and solutions, he also added 75 other questions known as the Neatcode 150. And I'm about to show you why it is the easiest and most optimal way to prepare for the coding interview. So let's go over to Neatcode.io. And here we are at Neatcode.io. So as you can see, we both have the Neatcode 150 as well as the original blind 75. 
So if we were to go to list view, we can see all these problems and we could technically go in order from top to bottom and just solve each and every one of these problems. However, the way that this website was intended was to be seen in this more organized categorical view. Basically, all of these categories are patterns that Neatcode has put all the 150 questions into. So for example, these problems right here represent arrays and hashing problems. These seven uh, problems right here represent heaps and priority queues. And we can go on and on. Basically, Neatcode.io is about teaching you the pattern and recognizing the pattern of the data structure algorithm needed to solve a problem rather than just memorize the problem and solution itself. So let's go to, uh, everyone always likes to talk about binary trees. So let's go to the trees. And as you can see, uh, as you can see, the difficulty goes from easy to hard. Those are the easy, medium, hard. Those are the leak code um, difficulty rankings. And as you can see here, here's invert binary tree. If we were to click on it, we would be taking the leak code in which we could uh, solve the inverting binary tree ourselves. The great thing about Neatcode.io is that he both provides solutions in video and code. In his video solution, as I stated before, he goes in depth and not just trying to give you the solution, but trying to explain how he got that solution, how to recognize that pattern. And that's the most important thing, memorizing the pattern, not the question, because just because you memorize all 150 answer does not mean that the interview that you go to is actually going to ask you any of those 150 questions. He might ask you something completely different about trees that you can only know if you memorize how to answer tree problems rather than trying to figure out the solution to a specific group of tree problems. Typically, his video solutions are in Python, but he has also provided the code solutions in various other languages. So obviously we have the Python solution here, but we can also see, okay, what if I only know how to code in Java? Well, here's your Java solution. Well, if you're like me and learn C and C++ first, and that's the one you're most comfortable with, well, there's C++ right here. If you want to do JavaScript, JavaScript's right here. And for the most part, each one of the problems is going to have a Python solution. And most of them at this point have Java, C++, and JavaScript. And Neatcode has promised to give the solution codes for all of them at some point and possibly even more programming languages. So how do I recommend you use Neatcode.io? First, I believe you should watch the video. Watch the video if you want to take notes, take notes, but basically keep note on how he's explaining how to do the problem, not just skipping to the end to write down the solution, copy the solution, and then just read that over and over again until you memorize the lines of code rather than actually understanding the problem and the solution. Once you get that general concept, I believe next you should go to your code of choice, look over that code, read over it again, try to figure out based on what you watched, then you try to uh, figure out how that code worked. Then I suggest you go into the code and you actually try to solve the problem while you are allowed to watch the video and look at the code. Once you're able to do that, then try to code up the solution while not looking at the video, but only the code or only looking at the code or not, on, not the video for reference. And eventually when you believe you're ready, close the video, don't look at the code and just try to code the solution on your own. And one thing I recommend when you get to this part is to record yourself because a lot of companies are going to want you to explain as you code. If you record yourself and when you watch back, you can't understand what you're saying and how it relates to your code, then you're going to have to keep practicing because if you can't understand what you're doing, how can a software engineer who's interviewing you over Zoom with potential lag understand what you're doing? And once you finish that problem and you're able to explain on video what you did without using any other resources except for what's in your mind, then I suggest you check that problem and go on to the next problem either within the same category or you can skip around to a different category that you want to work on. Now, what if you want to work on it outside of this current device? Well, I have the solution for that too. Neatcode has prepared a sign-in option. So you can sign to either your Google account or your GitHub account and save your progress across all devices. So let's say you're working on two pointer problems and you finish the first three problems here at home, but then you're going to go to work and then on your lunch at work, you want to see if you could complete the next two, but obviously you're not able to save it. Well, if you were to sign in here, sign to your Google, sign to your GitHub, then that progress saves. So when you sign in to Nico.io on your other device, you're able to pick up where you left off and you're able to continue going through the entire 
and the code 150. And let me remind you, this resource is entirely free. You don't have to pay a single dime to access this resource to learn how to solve these coding interview questions. However, I do suggest right here, go to his Patreon. I urge you, if you can, to support him. He has a few tiers. He's a great YouTuber. He's provided a great resource and you should definitely support him. And if you haven't already, go to his YouTube, subscribe, hit that notification bell for him as I already have. He is one of the best YouTubers, especially for aspiring software engineers or even experienced engineers who are just trying to find a new job. So as I said, Nico Dio, best free resource on the entire internet if you want to prepare for that coding interview. So let's go back over here. As you can see, Nico.io is an amazing free resource for anyone who wants to get ready for that coding interview. Whether you're a new grad, whether you're just finished your bootcamp, or whether you're a software engineer looking to find a new job, Nico.io is the best resource, in my opinion, in learning how to prepare for the coding interview. If you want to learn more about Nico.io and why I believe it's the best resource for you to prepare for the coding interview, I have recently written a new article on my blog just about that. So at jgoco.com slash blogs, you'll be able to find that new blog right there. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. You're an amazing person and I'm happy that you enjoyed my content today. If you want to see more content like this and you want to support me, you can buy me a boba down in the description down below. Either way, thank you all for watching The Coloco Show today. Wherever and whenever you are, have an amazing day. Peace out. Signing out.